Welcome everyone to another episode of Nerdistan, a podcast where we celebrate being nerds and being weird. I'm your host Manoj Matthew, and joining me today is my brother from another mother, Jay Naya. Yeah, yeah, Manoj, that's a cool introduction, man. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, my. I was not sure I could pull off that another mother thing. I was like a uh, brother, and I was like so much pressure was coming to my tongue. <laughs> I was like, ah. <laughs> We're really bonding up, man, over the podcast series. Yeah, My it's good, man. It's God. good. <laughs> that that was the most uh, clearest intro I think I've ever done. Like, you know. <laughs> and in one take, too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, listeners of the show, uh, if you're joining us today, uh, we are really grateful for it. Uh, this is going to be the fourth episode. Uh, we didn't do one last week, but... We did collaborate with. Uh, okay, I think I guess it's not collaborate. We're not YouTubers exactly, but we were on Nona Prince's channel. Uh, we were discussing Krish three yesterday, and we've been doing a lot of side stuff with uh, in Nona Prince's channel as well. So you can check that out as well. Although I feel like you know <laughs> most people might be coming from there than people going from here. <laughs> <laughs> and those who are coming from there, we are already sending no, in yeah. there only. So, so, uh, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, uh, like my intention behind the sentence was that, you know, I- I'm predicting us to be really huge in like a few months, you know, like yeah. because we are so good at this, you yeah. know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so I'm, <laughs> yeah, so I'm predicting you... us yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be very huge. So when people listen to this, they're like, oh, yeah, sure. You know, that makes sense. You know, these people are very big. So, you know, they're collaborating and stuff. <laughs> We're at the top of the food chart, man. We are like. Yeah, that's yeah. killing it. The people are going yeah. mad. Oh my god, the analysis. Oh my yeah. god, they're just too yeah, good. Yeah, my man. god. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, even like, I know we really have very low number of subscribers, but that's because of glitches in YouTube. It's yeah, yeah. Problem. Obviously, <laughs> man, obviously. We are, we are way too popular. You know, we're going yeah. after PewDiePie. Yeah. <laughs> man, that, you know, up until now, I was with you in that. But the, the time you mentioned Felix, man, just, okay, the, that goes out of my head. See, the, just to the list of the show, there are three things you should know about Jay. Uh, he's an MBA finance student. He's a gr- he's the biggest fan of Salman Khan that I know. And he's also a huge fan of PewDiePie. It's like three things that have no relation to each other, but it that's Jay. And I'm a huge fan of Tony Stark as well, as well as Christopher Nolan. So, yeah, so it's like all different stuff, yeah. you know. <laughs> okay, guys, I guess we'll dive into the topics. I mean, we I think yeah. joked around for a bit too long. So today we are primarily going to be talking about Batman Begins. Uh, the main reason behind that is because we're celebrating the 15-year anniversary of Batman Begins, a movie that probably revolutionized uh, superhero movies and I would say franchise movies in general in Hollywood and probably all over the world. But before that, before we talk about Batman's first adventure, let's talk about Batman's last adventure with Zack Snyder's Justice League. Oh, I'm so I'm so proud of that. That was the coolest segue I think I've done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm, I'm in full form today. I'm in fire. <laughs> when just look at us, we are just happy that we are not messing up. That's it. We are not happy that, yeah. oh my god, we are creating extraordinary content and unique content. No, we are just happy that we are not messing anything up right now. Oh my god. These little things, man. So, this only matter, I'm telling you. Yeah. The, the small things matter in life. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Zack Snyder, he just released a teaser in Twitter. Like, it was nothing. And yeah. he released a never seen, never seen before clip of Justice League, and I think the clip was pretty good. It was a very short clip. It didn't it didn't really reveal too much, but I think it uh, definitely showed the tone of what the movie is going to be. Yeah, man, I'm, like that clip took me by surprise. I am telling you right now because like I was not sure like whether the first teaser or trailer will come, but. When I saw it, no, the color scaling of it looked so, so much better than Justice League. And Dark Side, man, we get to see Dark Side, oh my god. True, true. And that Lex you know, was the there with Gal looking That was pretty good. Cool. It was, cool. man, beautiful. Like, yeah. I loved it. I'm hyped right now so much. Yeah, I mean, uh, I have two things to say. Uh, Darks, uh, like, two things. First is about Dark Side, and the second is about Lex Luthor. 
Dark Side. You know what I like about this design of Dark Side? Now, I'm actually not a huge fan of Zack Snyder's design of monsters. Like, mm. if you look at Doomsday, like, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of grey sort of CGI monsters that, yeah. you know, usually pops up, you know, and like, I was not a huge fan of Doomsday. Uh, Zod was a lot better because he was a human, like, uh, he was not a human, he was a Kryptonian, but he was portrayed by a human actor and stuff like that. So, you know, you could really feel his emotions. And mm. Michael Shannon did an amazing job with that character. But uh, with Darkseid, initially I was going to be, I was actually a spect- skeptical because I was like, you know, and I, again, it's going to be a grey monster. But, I like this design a lot because it actually looks like Dark Side, even though it's a grey monster. Like yeah. obviously the blue armor is not there because he, it's still a young version of Dark Side. Hmm. But I like the design a lot. Like it's it's instantly recognizable. Yeah, true. Yeah, and uh, my second point is like directly directly related to your Lex Luthor point. Uh, like uh, for me again, I'm not a I'm not the biggest fan of Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. Uh, like I feel like you know he like. I don't know, like, I understand what he's going for, but it doesn't always work with me. But he always gets the best lines. Yeah. Even in Batman right. Superman, <laughs> he he always gets the best lines. And even in this teaser, dude, the lines that he says, pretty cool, pretty cool. It's 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 very, like, teaser-worthy lines, you know? Yeah, true, exactly. <laughs> those, those are the lines which you, you are supposed to show at, like, uh, snippets and teaser trailer promo to get people yeah, hype yeah. up. Oh my god, big thing is going to happen. True, true, true. Like, true. you see, the red capes are coming. Oh, yeah. The red capes Even, are... Yeah, like, yeah. God versus man. Yeah, Like, yeah, you know, yeah, in the yeah, battle yeah. movement. Yeah, oh, man, I was so hyped for that. Yeah, movie. exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like day versus night, man yeah. versus god. Oh man, yeah, it's so it's good. So good. <laughs> so overall, we are very excited for the teaser. Uh, yeah. Sorry for the movie. We are we are excited for the next teaser that comes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but more importantly, we are more excited for the movie, and it's looking like it's going to be an amazing experience, and hopefully, yeah. it lives up to its weight. I guess. See, because uh... we waited too long for this. <laughs> man, I'm telling you, like. Anything after Justice League will definitely live up to the hype. I'm mean, definitely that's, true, that's true, like the true. lowest and definitely true, true. Like, how can you go below that? Yeah, like how can you go below that? It's like the bottom <laughs> of the iceberg. Yeah, true. I mean, like I uh, like we discussed Justice League in like in great detail, and yeah. we also try to like uh, see it from the producer's standpoint. Yeah. Like we try to be sympathetic at them. It didn't really uh, last for long, but still. <laughs> I think that was my favorite episode, which we have done so far. The and Justice the long, League one. <laughs> longest as well, right? No, the second longest. No, no, no. The, that was the second longest. Okay. But today's is going to be shortest. because. Yeah, we'll episode. try. We'll try. <laughs> I will try to wrap this up in one hour. Yeah, yeah. Not. <laughs> yeah. So what has happened here is the same thing that happened with Justice League. You know, we have a studio mandate that we have yes. to finish it in this much time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but uh, let's move on to the next topic. Uh, yes. And this topic I'm very excited for. Uh, this was a topic that it's not something that's going to get us a lot of views or something like that. But at, at this point in our, like, at this point in the channel's life, I guess we're not really concerned about views that much. We are more yeah. concerned about talking about stuff that we like. We are already getting millions <laughs> of views, man. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we like, you very... know, we, we can afford. Yeah. Yeah, to exactly. Like we are a very core <laughs> fan base who is just waiting for our podcast. Oh my god, Nerd is the Nerd podcast true, coming, true. guys. <laughs> They're just spamming us everywhere, you know? I just had yeah, to root my phone for that. Because there are so yeah, many texts. Oh my god. Such a life. <laughs> so, uh, what we are going to do here is we're going to do a brief overview of what Batman begins. Today, we're going to talk about our feelings of the movie on why, how, why it's so important for us. So, uh, j- uh, first off, we're going to start with what the movie means to us. Mm. It's going to be a very, like, uh, heart-to-heart we're going to have with the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guessed it right. We don't have girlfriends. <laughs> hey, don't, don't tell anyone. Don't, don't. Just... We are already nerds, no? so they must have yeah, guessed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably. So, Jay, what are your thoughts? Like, what, are your, what does this movie mean to you, Batman Begins? See... Uh, just like I told you, like a couple of days ago, I saw, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. I saw Batman Begins after the Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises. 
Yeah. And after that, me and Jay didn't talk for two days. <laughs> uh, it, it took me two days to recover from that. <laughs> and it took me two days to convince you to do this podcast yeah. with me. <laughs> Go on, you know, go on. <laughs> I have my reasons as well because see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in my circle, there was not at all a single person who even watched it or even curious about all those things. So, like for me, yeah. uh, I think in my college or like eleven, uh, in my coaching, someone suggested me, "Oh my God, Darknet is supposed to be the greatest movie." I was like, "What's the hype about it?" Then I watched it. I was like. I was like, obviously, it, it was my one of the first Hollywood movies. I was like, ah, yeah, it's good, I guess. I don't know what it is. It's, it's, it looks good. But then I rewatched it, like, after three to four years when I got the census of what is movie and cinema, Christopher Nolan and, yeah. and all that. Then I was like, okay, really loved it. Maybe now I should watch the Batman Begins. Then I watched Batman Begins. And that was also, like, uh, two, two years ago, at least. So... Uh, for this podcast, I have to rewatch it because like two years is a lot of time, and it was just vague memories. So when I rewatched it, man, this is such a rare thing. Like for a two thousand five movie, the writing, the writing is so so top notch because yeah. each character plays a very very crucial role in the movie or in the character development yeah. of Bruce Wayne. Second, true, true. it was Christopher yeah. Nolan's fourth movie, like after following Insomnia yeah. and Memento. And one of the yeah. things I want to give his, props uh, his to his first one, blockbuster movie. Yeah, it this his gives first, it, like, huh. into blockbuster Yeah, movie. this gives him the recognition he needed. And one yeah. thing I want to give props to Warner Brothers for that, like, uh, like last Batman was Batman and Robin, which was like, yeah, Joe Schumacher. Yeah, He's like born like kid. anything. After that, for nine years, Warner Brothers, like, Batman was supposed to be the, like, Batman and Superman were the, like, uh, main things of Warner Brothers. Mm. They were, like, oh, the mainstays. The yeah, mainstays. exactly. And for Warner Brothers to trust a new director, Christopher Nolan, and yeah. to give him their treasure, that was really a yeah. courageous thing to do. No, and but that actually, really, you know what? Uh, I would like to say that the Joe Schumacher's the interpretation of Batman and, the, you know, the... Uh, the because even that time actually what happened with Justice League uh, last year, yeah. say, like or when when it released in 2017, the same thing sort of happened with Batman and Robin and Batman Forever because even there like they, they had gone really dark with Batman and Batman Returns in yeah. like the the early the Michael Keaton movies, so they kind of wanted to lighten things up. So that's why they went in a complete different direction with the Joe Schumacher movie. So I would like to say that they actually. Uh, how poorly those uh, the uh, Batman and Robin was received that kind of helped WB put faith in something new, you know? Yeah. Like they true. they needed something new. So I guess in a way you could say that they were kind of forced to do this. Like they needed a they desperately needed a new direction. Yeah, but still, man, it's such a like you just couldn't give it away. You know, Batman yeah, yeah, is true, a treasure. True. You just huh? the thing that they trusted Nolan true, and true. after even not like. At that time, Nolan was even not ready with the full script. He was just had the brief idea what he was going to do with the Batman yeah. and the Bruce sure, Wayne sure. character in general. And they were so much sure, sure. like satisfied by the idea. They like go went away sure. crazy with it. But you know what? I agree with how, what you're saying that Batman was uh, the uh, Batman was a very like precious character for WB. Yeah. But this was in a time when you know superhero movies were not such a big thing. Yeah. So they were probably like they probably didn't realize how like how much. Exactly. What while this character actually is, they probably thought that you know, I guess superhero movies are fading away. Yeah. But uh, little did they know that this movie would have like revolutionized all the true, movies true. coming later. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. <laughs> so, uh, do you have any more thoughts, like uh, initial sort of your thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll discuss in detail. Like, I have, like, for yeah. this podcast, man, I'm telling you, I have, like, as I told you yesterday only, like, this yeah, is yeah. the most I've worked <laughs> on. Like, I've so, literally sat and broke the movie in three acts and <laughs> lead, like, each character, what it is is necessary for that character to be there. The dialogue, sure, sure, sure. the character development. Oh, dude, the and, dialogues are amazing. I mean, yeah. I, uh, dude. <laughs> and man, the underappreciated humor in the movie. Oh yeah, it, I want to talk about that as well. So we'll yeah. get to all those yeah, points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. Get to I'm all so those excited. Of, yeah, I'll just say my sort of initial sort of like feelings yeah. and thoughts about this movie. 
See, this movie was my childhood. Like, I, like I grew up watching this movie millions of times. Like, uh, like I rewatched this movie again yesterday, and there were times where I knew the background music which was going to come. I knew the dialogues which were going to come. Like my, like I, li- there were times where I was lip singing the dialogue. So that's how much this movie means to me. Like, uh, I'm someone for like there are people who uh, hold the original Star Wars trilogy as like their favorite thing ever. For me, this was my Star Wars growing up, the Dark Knight trilogy. Like, this mm-hmm. reshaped my opinion on movies. This pretty much, I think, the reason who I am right now has a lot to do with the Dark Knight trilogy because the amount of times I've rewatched this movie. Rewatch these movies growing up is like a lot, and it's probably not healthy amount of times. So that's what this movie means to me. I just want to put it out there, uh, and it's a very contradictory view from Jay because Jay watched these movies after a while, whereas I watched it pretty much when it released. So yeah. you have two points of views, but even even though we have like two different points of views, like we still love this movie a lot, yeah. which just shows how much this movie has sort of <clears throat> stood the test of time. At least in the storytelling element of it. And now I appreciate this movie even more because, like, from a two thousand five stand up uh, stand up view, the writing yeah. went in the script. And this is like, uh, like in the current times also, we don't see much of this level writing at all. Like at all. True, true. There are like true. few cinemas true, like true. Martin Scorsese, Quentin Tarantino. They have their own, like, uh, their own way of writing. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. This so, is so. pretty much rare, like yeah. uh, this is uh, this is a very like when you look at the movie, you know, it's actually pretty simple. Like uh, it's a very traditional form of writing yeah. in a way. Yeah. Like the themes, the dialogues, it comes back, but it's done so well. Yeah. And they kind of put a non-linear structure to the storytelling True. to make it a little different, which I really yeah. liked. Like you know, you see Bruce Wayne at different points in his adulthood. Like the the movie picks up, they show a scene from his childhood, but it immediately goes yeah. to him in prison, <laughs> which is a fantastic way of uh, you know portraying like starting off with the Bruce Wayne character because you're like, wait, why is he in prison? You know, like yeah. uh, this uh, famous character, like that's a point which you don't expect to see Bruce Wayne sort true, of have. And true. I just lo- and even the prison fight, like <laughs> as you said, like uh, we'll probably start off a little bit about the humor, like yeah. uh, this is fight <laughs> that he does with all the inmates over there, and uh, you're like, I like the fact that you know they're like uh, they put breakfast, like and he's like, can they kill me before breakfast? Like yeah. <laughs> he gets this threat that you know they're gonna kill you, and dude, the yeah, Christian Bale's performance in this is so good that you know True. he has he's not wooden, you know, because Bruce Wayne is a very like dark character, he's a kind of introvert character, but he portrays the charm of Bruce Wayne pretty well. That you don't you connect with him all the time, like even when he's in his darkest moments, you uh, you uh, clearly understand what he's going through, and uh, many like even I think yesterday we were discussing uh, uh, Christian Bale's Batman sort of came up when we were discussing yeah. Chris Three yesterday over at Nona Princess Channel, and even there I said that Christian Bale's Batman portrayed the soul of Batman perfectly, and that's why I feel I think that if you look at Batman Begins, it portrays a, it gives a clear examples of why like Christian Bale's Batman for me is the closest we're going to get to the Bruce Wayne version from the comics, like to the raw Bruce Wayne version. Because I feel like I don't know what Robert Pattinson's Batman, but I I have like I can't imagine what that's going to be. But to get such a true uh, true sort of portrayal of Batman from his childhood to him becoming Batman because of Batman Begins I don't think we're ever going to get that because if any filmmaker again tries to do this they'll like they'll just be criticized for just ripping off Batman Begins yeah. uh, you understanding what I'm saying so yeah, yeah. this is going to be like the true journey of Batman I don't think we're ever going to get this again yeah, no, so no. I like again like I'll go back to my point of the humor like uh, that, that prison fight is pretty good because it's it's such a dirty fight it's just <laughs> like him rolling over everyone and you know just punching <laughs> Oh, on the dirt, and the security guard sort of drags him away, and he's they're like they're dragging him away for protection, and he's like, I don't need protection. And he's, they're like protection for them, not you. Yeah, <laughs> like, seen those it. those bits of humor are things which people don't ever connect with the Dark Knight trilogy, yes. but actually the Dark Knight trilogy has had very good amounts of humor throughout the series. Yeah, and it was not forced at all. It was not like they were mm-hmm. trying for the humor. It was like that situation suits appeals for that humor. 
Yeah, and yeah, that yeah. was so good. Yeah. And regarding the Bruce Wayne point of view, I think before that, all the Batman movie never focused on Bruce Wayne the character. They were all about Batman. And when Christopher yeah. Nolan decided to make this movie, he was very much sure in his head that he is going to tell this journey with the Bruce Wayne in, as the character because at the core, he Bruce Wayne it is. Okay, Batman. Yeah, can yeah. You say, yeah. Is the alter ego or like something of symbol we will talk about in uh, like. Ahead, but yeah, Bruce Wayne we'll talk about the, that. Yeah, Bruce Wayne is the yeah. center of it. So uh, yeah. the decision of him taking to explore him, the first it, the it whole, humanizes the character. Yeah, the That's whole what he first did. He humanized the, the movie character. was for Bruce Wayne only, and I loved that thing about it. True, true, true. I mean, I, I even I think we only get to see Batman one hour into the movie. Uh, if I, I think yeah. I check the time when Batman actually arrives on the dock. Exactly. The the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like one of them. So that, that shows the, the amount of care he gives to the character. See, uh, yeah. this, uh, for me, Batman Begins is like the best origin movie. Like, while watching this, I kept comparing it to another movie, which uh, was made Maybe. from the same creators, but okay. it didn't reach this level. And that's Man of Steel. Uh, and I kept looking, I'm like, I'm like, oh man, they actually went pretty wrong with Man of Steel. Like, yeah. uh, because just looking at Batman Begins, I wish, you know, I know you don't want to copy the formula, but I kind of wish they did. Because they did, yeah. I feel like they uh, like they had a little bit of that. They had Clark in sort of traveling the world and stuff. But th- my biggest sort of objection with Man of Steel, like I know I'm going ahead a little bit here, but mm-hmm. it's that they had Superman. See, the best part about Batman Begins is, even it's it's only a one hour in that we get to see Batman, but even then we have a little bit of fun with Batman. Like yeah. they have him, like you know, do they have him take on Cal Calvin, like uh, Falcone's uh, like uh, hmm. the drug ring? They have him take on that dr- ring, and they have him have some fun before Ra's al Ghul actually comes on the scene again. Yeah. But with Man of Steel, we didn't have that. You know, we had Superman get a suit, then immediately General Zod comes in. And I think that is the biggest flaw in Man of Steel as a movie because we don't get to see Superman like you know thrive. Whereas Batman Begins, we get his entire origin, but we also get to see Batman sort of thrive in that yeah. sort of role as the as the protector of the city. Yeah, that was just that was just a point of comparison. We can get back to Batman Begins. And it or really do you have anything just, else yeah, to add? It, like Christopher Nolan was the executive producer of like Superman, Man of Steel, and it's not. He like was he also was like. In... Part of the story also, if I remember correctly, he, like yeah. I think he was also one of the writers. And uh, no, 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 he was not a writer. He was like uh, looking at the project very closely, but he was not like uh, involving in the uh, writers' room. Okay, so that okay. was a bit of a disappointment for me because it's not like Christopher, Christopher Nolan himself has said it that Zack did pretty, uh, pretty good job with Man of Steel. It's not like he was having yeah. complaint with him or not, but yeah. uh, it would have been better if you would have taken a couple of hints or advices although, from although uh, i heard that he's he was not he was not a fan of uh jackson and killing zord off yeah yeah like at least the way they did like uh he was not convinced but uh, apparently uh, towards the end he was convinced yeah. but i think that speaks volumes because even i was not a huge fan of the zord killing part because i thought that was not the movie where they needed that for that to happen you know like for example in batman begins also we have a similar thing happening with raza Gu, hmm. but that was clearly like in the story they kind of really established that very well but yeah. that's not the case with you know man of steel uh, okay so like... chris Nolan is uh yeah uh, chris Nolan is credited with uh, uh the story of man of steel okay yeah i just checked it right now because okay. i i remember him having some sort of like creative input i don't know but uh, let, let's not like dwell too much on Man of Steel. But uh, it's just like one point which I wanted to make. Yeah. Let's get back to Batman Begins now. <laughs> yes. Okay, so uh, we talked about the prison scene. And then we have Liam Neeson's character sort of meeting yeah. Batman. And let me just say that Liam Neeson's character, Raza Gru, like he is probably the best antagonist I've seen in an origin story movie. Because in origin story movies, usually the, the antagonist character is pretty weak. But yeah. I found Raza Gru's character so compelling in this. Yes, yes. So yeah, so uh, I want to uh, go back a little bit further and I want to start by the very first shot we were shown. Okay, so uh, we were introduced to a boy who was like playing in his garden with some girl and he eventually yeah. fell yeah. down into a hole. 
okay yeah. so we, so that was the first time we were introduced to the concept of fear okay yeah and he was shown sitting on the ground and he didn't gather enough courage to even stand up until his dad came for the rescue yeah. and now yeah. this is the brilliance of writing see yeah. christopher nolan treated did not treated bruce wayne's character as a part of batman or as a part of comic book see because of the choices he made if you look at the choices he made with the batman trilogy and batman begins na you would clearly know that he was not going for the uh, superhero part or even the superhero genre of batman what he was going for the character the world gotham and the themes which he was going to show yeah, you yeah see true, because true, true. Uh, in the first scene like so bruce is down there and first the concept of fear is introduced now he has yeah. just progressively evolved this fear of bruce into rage vengeance and then redemption throughout the whole yeah. movie he has done it and in such a brilliant way just by writing man now th- this sure, is sure, what sure. i love see because this sure. makes movie in rewatches much better see you can make yeah. a great movie in the first movie i would love it but for the second time when i'm sure, watching sure. Na, i will go for the details the hidden details in the movie and he sets for sure, sure. see in the comics we were shown uh, that uh, the uh, before the killing of uh, Uh, his mother and uh, father they mm-hmm. went for the zoro movie okay yeah. so and he avoided this choice he instead went for a theme and the reason he went yeah. he stated that because he does not wanted it to see in the comics that he being he saw the zoro movie in helping kind of poor by looting the rich he did not want the bru- little bruce to have that idea instead true, true. for the cool character development throughout the whole movie and true. Th- this is one of the like most underseen things in batman begins i have not seen anyone but, like much of the people talk about it is the thomas wayne see i am telling you simultaneously just imagine okay zack snyder yeah. uh, in batman versus superman we were shown bo- uh, like the first scene is like uh, them uh, parents got murdered okay batman begins batman versus yeah. superman but in batman begins that what choice did thomas wayne make he didn't attack the looter or the thug he went for the self yeah. defense and to save his wife instead in zack snyder one the thomas wayne tried to attack hey, he may throw throw okay and now <laughs> this establishes the fact that zack snyder was going for the flashpoint paradox in which thomas wayne was the batman now batman, this, yeah. this oh my god this just took me away like uh, I was like oh my god this is such a big detail it's such a small thing yeah. but it's such a yeah. very big detail what snyder's plan sure. was for the future and he how clearly establishes that so that is yeah. my like very first point i will go and i mean so i need no but out. i mean like i i would say like uh, even like even if we don't look at the future yeah. like definitely the way how thomas wayne was portrayed in batman begins and in yeah. the batman vs superman the universes Yeah. It's definitely different, and I think it's a reflection on those movies as well. Because Batman as a character in Batman Begins or in the Dark Knight trilogy, he's more of a protector True. in terms of like he always tries to look out for the people, yeah. and he focuses on redemption. He focuses on justice. He doesn't focus on killing. So yeah. like even when someone puts a gun at Batman, he yeah. does not kill him. You know, he finds a different way to sort of subdue him. But in yeah. Batman vs Superman. Obviously, there's a history attached to Ben Affleck's character of Bruce Wayne, and you know he was yes. obviously uh, there are a lot of rumors and story elements even within the movie to suggest that he was not always like this. He was not always a killer, but mm-hmm. it just when we take just those two movies in the surface level, if you look at it like it's a reflection on the Batman characters as well because Ben Affleck's Batman in Batman vs Superman is a guy who just kills everyone. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I just uh, so when you brought up that point, I saw saw a paradox there. Not a paradox, mm-hmm. a parallel there as well. Yeah. Go on, go on, Jay. Yeah. So uh, this is like it, and now like man, I'm just I can go and on and on, you know, about the writing of this movie. It's just so so good. Yeah. See, the basic idea of introducing any character in the movie that that character, uh, uh, in a way leads to the character development of either uh, himself 
or uh, the protagonist or the antagonist character and hmm. uh, Christopher Nolan while writing this movie make sure that each and every character played that role see at the very next scene we were like uh, we were shown Rashal Go okay yeah. so the whole idea and Rashal Go introduced him with the idea of as a human you can be destroyed okay you can But be sabotaged <laughs> yes But as a symbol you can live on <laughs> and this yeah, you're incorruptible wa- yes that exactly. the way he says that is so good man. yeah like, you know? man <laughs> it's just and it, like i will uh, go i will connect it in the second act when we will talk about it so this is the first yeah. time bruce was introduced like oh my god he is right there must be a symbol yeah. a legend which even if he yeah. like dies one day it should keep on going because people and that there. that aspect continued even in the dark night rises yes exactly like, yes exactly uh, yes when ba- yes. when batman was presumed to be dead the yeah. people were using his symbols as chalk to yeah. like mark the directions and to mark like safe points they were yeah. using the batman symbol and there even there's a dialogue in dark night rises where one of the police officers asks like uh, he asks like uh, joseph gordon levitt's character like john yeah. blake that can you put your hope in something more real Exactly, like but yeah, this yeah. is real for them like i this for me the entire trilogy like i know many people disagree with me but yeah. for me this is like the best trilogy true, like true. for me like yeah true <laughs> man true because like and this quest of him finding a symbol goes like as you said in the whole trilogy like bruce knows yeah. that he being the most privileged of all kids could not be the figure or a symbol and he certainly yeah. never can be his father okay Yeah. So he tries to create Batman made from his own fear, who stands as a symbol yeah. of fear. If yeah, and true, true, if true. it is one of the quote, if anyone does anything wrong, he need to be feared because due to corruption, the police force is just not good enough. You need something more yeah. than that. Okay, but yeah. he very well knew that Batman won't be enough to change Gotham for good. Yeah, sure, he can beat up yeah. the mob and bad guys all night long, but there is a limit to it. Yeah. how would he true, stop true. bad guys in the formation which are like work in progress because he certainly was never an image to be followed because in the whole yeah. trilogy like police were very much up against him all the time okay yeah yeah, yeah. Ra- rashal who in his first meeting gave bruce an idea of a legend which does not die in its own way hence he starts looking yeah. for figure like that who can be a good idol for others like rachel gordon rachel gordon yeah and he even do the same thing in the next mightman movie like harvey dent in the yeah. dark knight and then rises the tyla el ghul before no yeah, let yeah. shiva yeah i mean this shows yeah. the continuity man this makes a trilogy great it i just want to say not only tyla el ghul but even uh, that there's a police character in dark knight rises oh yes who, yes i forgot like, about it who, yeah, yeah 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 even i forgot his, i forgot the character's name but who like who stays at home and he says that you know that there's nothing can be done Yeah. You know, we lost this fight garden but then he sees batman sort of like simple yeah. like coming in the end and he actually goes out and he actually dies in the end but like like as you said the connections between that they sort of established throughout the trilogy is amazing yeah it's true man so this this really show how much a uh, director or a writer cares about their work like before, yeah, like yeah. if you look at the trilogy spans over a t- over a decade like 2005 to 2013 almost a decade Okay so this yeah. was like huge deal for me when i was like oh my god it finally connecting the dots he was always yeah. looking for something or some symbol that like, bang true, true. great great yeah so true, true. Yeah. i just uh, i also want like point out uh, just about Ray, Ray, rasa goose character yeah. like uh, dude the, so in the comics usually batman like travels around the world to like mm-hmm. learn different martial arts styles and that mm-hmm. is kind of implied here because he does travel around the world and dude just that sequence of him traveling around the world just to know the criminal mind yeah yeah just yeah. that is so good because you know he's traveling around the world he's understanding what it means yeah. to be a criminal what is you know and i i like to think that he sort of picked up a few martial arts there as well because yeah, when yeah. we meet him initially in batman begins he is mm. a decent competent fighter obviously yeah. he's a no he's no match for the league of assassins Obviously. which uh, they renamed it to be league of shadows in this which i uh, hmm. which i know actually was a bit of a controversial choice if i remember because people were like hey he's going against the comics but i kind of yeah. like the idea of league of shadows yes, yes. like i like yeah. the sound of that more 
yeah, but uh, yeah, I was just trying to say about Ross and Bruce's character. Like the way how they sort of connected his character to Batman's origin mm. was a brilliant thing because what it did was, if you look at most origin movies, especially after Batman Begins, we have so many old superhero origin movies that have come out. Yeah. Yeah. In all those movies, like the villain is always half baked. Because yeah. we don't really get to see much of the villain, and we don't really know much of him, because most of the movie is spent on developing the protagonist character, which is how origin movies should be. I agree with that. But Batman Begins does such a great job of connecting the villain to the origin, so that yeah. actually, without us even realizing, we are getting a lot of the villain initially as well. So yeah. they're developing the character so that when Liam Neeson's character comes in the third act in the end. We don't mm-hmm. feel like we are lacking anything. We understand the conflict. They don't have yeah. to re-establish the conflict, and which yeah. is such a brilliant like way of writing the story for me. So, uh, uh, like, yeah. uh, now I want to talk about like editing is so top-notch, man. Like they avoided as much as uh, uh, what do we say that fillers as much as they can. See, the yeah. editing was made even that whole training part of the League of Shadows, like the montage have, part. Yeah, that yeah. was. Yeah, they, like in so many movies, I have seen like the whole training montage go for like ten, fifteen, twenty minutes. Like, oh my God, he's buffing. Yeah. Like he's building his body, true, he's true. doing, and and he just ended in just five minutes because we know yeah. because like at the end of the montage, he will get all being perfect. Like he will join the League of Shadows. So there was but, no need. Uh, to, yeah. Yeah, but the, I just want to say one thing. Yeah. Uh, you know the, the training mode is the sword fight sequence. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was actually shot on location, and you know the sound of the ice breaking that you hear. That's yeah. actually real, because oh. apparently they were on the last. They, they were on the last leg of that, and they had okay. to get the shots. And oh. the very next day after they finished shooting, the ice literally melted from there. So oh, they were like, oh. that was actually <laughs> real, like. Uh, they apparently uh, like uh, look. I was a like I've seen a lot of behind the scenes stuff in YouTube and all over this yeah. movie, and uh, most of it was on location. Like they obviously there were a few things they cheated here and there, mm-hmm. but for the most part, that was actually in location. And I really appreciate this movie a lot more. And even throughout this movie, there are a lot of visual effects. There's actually a lot of visual effects throughout the movie, but okay. it's not very noticeable. And especially for a 2005 movie, that's acting amazing because yeah. they lose a, they use a lot of miniatures throughout the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, to like sort of sort of show the city Gotham City, or even to show the League of Assassins, the, te- the temple, the thing on yeah. top of the mountain, even that was actually a combination of miniatures with a little bit of CGI use on top. Yeah. So I thought that was really good. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot. like it's, these are the small details which really stands out. You know, yeah, these yeah. are very very crucial, man. Like, uh, huh. so now and now I want to come to the character part. Like see, yeah. Bruce Wayne, he lost his parents at a very early age. Okay, he had all yeah. the money in the world, but he didn't know anything what to do about it. All he knew yeah. about the vengeance. Okay, like when we were yeah. shown the first time, he went to attend a trial with a gun. Yeah, yeah. So, that scene was amazing, man. That entire yeah. sequence of him going back and his yeah. interaction between his character and. Rachel's guy, Rachel, like yes. the whole thing, they really establish his core, his beliefs in that scene, you know, yes, which is yes. what most superhero movies movies lack because yes. we don't because know they... what the superhero stands for, but this one yes. is so brilliantly done Be- because it's like works so hard on the writing, like uh, that conversation yeah. you just mentioned. I want to t- I take this into further, like reach like uh. There were uh, both were uh, ideally talking about justice, but both were having different ideas about it. In one hand, Bruce was seeking, thinking vengeance is justice, okay, and yeah. Rachel told him that justice is for harmony and vengeance is to make yourself feel good. And Bruce yeah. immediately clicked with this. That's why yeah. he threw the gun away in the uh, sea or yeah, sure. the bay, whatever it was. And, and uh, dude, right. the place where he throws a gun away, and yeah. uh, when he leaves, like uh, yeah. after that he leaves, uh, he gives his coat to someone else and he leaves. Huh. That same place is where he appears as Batman again. In is the, it? when he ah, first yes, appears yes, as yes, Batman, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, first appears as Batman, yeah. which yeah, is so yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, go back to your point. Go yeah, back to your point. Yeah, Sorry yeah. for the So, uh, <laughs> uh, here it is. 
so now it's not like he forgot that idea when in the first scene the first confrontation between rashal gu and bruce uh, bruce in that like jail okay uh, rashal gu told him that uh, it's a uh, so couple of years ago or few years ago their family was also killed and what he did was vengeance and bruce clearly said that he does not seek for vengeance it won't serve him any purpose okay so this is like every character in the movie because he bruce lost his parents bruce does not know anything about it so if yeah. when a person does not know anything about it you want to teach him this many thing so what you do you put characters eventually in the places where he get to learn from see after the his conversation with rachel and that one cinematic shot i want to talk about man when rachel takes him down to uh, to show him the underworld he was lit- she literally yeah. takes him down to the interval when he goes down the bridge that was such a clever shot man I, sure, yeah sure, sure, sure. And, yeah <laughs> and then after that conversation he went inside a uh, carmine falconi okay that and, scene is so good that yeah. the actor portrays falconi <laughs> is so good like the way he says like you know you haven't thought about your butler you haven't thought about your lady friend that yeah <laughs> yeah, the way yeah, he says that. yeah. <laughs> then like that was the first time like carmine carmine a falconi character was about power and the power of fear okay yeah, people yeah. always fear what they don't understand and that sent him to the journey of self discovery to truly understand the world so true, see true, true. Th- see it's see, this like is was this is what an... man of steel this is what man of steel really missed exactly. in man of steel you see clark kent's character sort of go on this you know big yeah. uh, sort of like visiting the world around but we don't yeah. know his core reason behind like obviously he wants to find himself but it's not established properly like they do it's, in batman begins exactly exactly see like it's not like carmine falconi was just an antagonist for the name of it okay he was there to, for a reason true, he true. introduced bruce true, into the ca- uh, power of fear and the unknowns of the world that's why he went on the yeah. discovery of a uh, self discovery yeah. and true, that's true. so so good uh, yeah I mean, totally, totally agree with you. I also like, like I just, I, I know I briefly mentioned this before, but the scene where he gives his coat and he's like, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, that entire interaction. And I, I love how that, how you know, he pays that off, Christopher Nolan. I have yeah. to say that's the most un-Christopher Nolan moment. Like yeah. that's like that's not a moment you expect in a Christopher Nolan movie, but it's done so well. Where you know, when Bat when he comes back as Batman and you know he crashes, mm. he takes Gal <laughs> Falcone, yeah. and then he you know says I am Batman, and then he looks at him and says like, Nice coat, and then he goes yeah. out. Oh man, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I I love that. I like this movie. It's like because uh, Christopher Nolan while making this movie, you know, even then there was a lot of confusion as to the yeah. tone of the movie because. they wanted this movie to be attracted to kids as well because obviously batman is a character that kids sort of you know are attracted to you know yeah and how uh, christian wall sort of wrote this movie and he directed this movie is was in a way where a 14 year old or a 13 year old when okay. they look at this movie they would yeah. feel cool to watch this yeah. movie like yeah. it would be a it would be that kind of movie which is like edgy which is like you know pushing it a little bit and mm-hmm. i think that's a sort of reflection on the blockbusters that christopher nolan used to watch when he was growing up like you yeah. had uh, movies like jurassic park and stuff like that so i think there's a lot of that in batman begins where where he's trying to create this very spectacular kind of movie but he's also mm-hmm. trying to be a little bit edgy for the child like the children yeah, audiences yeah. i guess <laughs> yeah So I mean, we we I think we talked about his self discovery. We talked about. Uh, yeah. I just want to talk a little bit about the training. We talked a little bit about the training montage, but there's yeah. a scene where you know he has the exam, he has the test, the final test, and yeah. I love that scene so much. Like the way how he fools uh, Liam Neeson's character into thinking that you know he's somewhere else. Yeah, it's so <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Oh uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, that that scene, I. Uh, that scene was pretty good like i still remember that scene so fondly and and uh, i i also have to say that you know throughout the movie uh, there's a theme of fear mm-hmm. fear is like a theme as you said before like it's a theme that's there throughout the movie in terms of yes. you know the the thing that scare the med- not the medicine the sort of uh, the poison that scarco makes yes. and you know that yes. uh, taking from the blue flower and even in that scene you know that the final test you have the scene where all the bats come thrashing out of the box yeah. Yeah. Bruce Wayne sort of helps him. Like yeah. all of that was so good. And 
I have to say that bad CGI. It looks hmm. so good even now, fifteen true, years true, after. True. It looks so good, and it it like astounds me as to how good that looks. Like yeah. it should not, it shouldn't look that good, right? It's like fifteen exactly. years ago, but it looks so good. <laughs> You know, up until now, I never even think of it that it was CGI. Now you're telling me that okay, that okay, yes, yeah. obviously it was CGI. Where would I get all that words from? <laughs> yeah, dude, it's like it's oh my god, like we'll we'll get to that scene where the, all the bats come in, which is like one yeah. of my favorite scenes ever. But yeah. uh, then we have the trailing montage, and then you have you know, hmm. okay, now the now we come to a controversial scene where Bruce he burns the entire sort of place. Now I just want yeah. to first talk about the positive of the scene. It's hmm. a very good scene, like. Uh, there's yeah. one problem in this uh, entire movie. It's the fight choreography because Chris Nolan is yes, not yes. the best no, person no. to shoot fight choreography. Yeah, definitely. You definitely. Seem, uh, you seem struggling a little bit. Yeah. Like he edits around the fight scene so that mm. you get the impact. You you feel the impact in your one. You're like, okay, he definitely punched him there. Oh, he hit yeah. him there. But you don't really see that very well. You know, he mm. cuts around that. Yes. Yeah, and uh, that I, I'm, I'm like, it's a 2005 movie. You know, it's one of his first sort of action movies that he's doing. Yeah, I'm yes, like, I'm yes. willing to let that. I'm willing to let that slide because he has improved yes. a lot. Because if you look at Inception, he has actually mm-hmm. put the camera in one place and he sort of let the action sort of flow. But yeah. uh, I guess, uh, and look, fight choreography yes. probably not his biggest strength. Hmm. But you know, storytelling is his biggest strength, and that's more important. Yes, like, yeah, eventually. that's exactly. So, yeah, know? That's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I just want to. Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, but I just want to say that scene where he like rescues Liam Neeson's character, when he uh-huh. like goes down the slope, is <laughs> it still gets me, you know? Like yeah. where he like goes down the slope and he just catches him and then you know he like pulls him up with all his energy. Oh, that scene! Even now when I watch it, yeah. <laughs> with one Even hand in I his expression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even now when I watch it, I'm like, oh man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm but, glad that you yeah. bring the whole uh, burning down of temple thing. And yeah, that's the controversial contra- scene. Yes. Yeah, like, now, because, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go on, go now, on. I'm going to I want to share my view <laughs> on this. <laughs> I want to share my view on this because, see, uh, people were like arguing, uh, he thought to burn that building, what would have we have expected, he would have killed so many guys. No, no, no. You guys hear me first, okay? So, when he... Those are ninjas, though. Like, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yes. He never tried to kill anybody. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the first action was his of self-defense. He knew that the only way he was getting out of it is to create a distraction. He couldn't beat yeah. all those guys, man. Those all are in ninjas and Rashal go including. So he created a distraction by causing a fire. Okay. So and then that fire starts rising. Uh, that's growing, growing, growing. And the only reason he wanted to burn the whole place down because see. Uh, even he, he would, even if he had, like, uh, somehow escaped from the building without hurting anyone, na, that school, that institution would have been keep on growing for years and decades and centuries to come. He, no, but I actually want to, I actually want to argue with that point. I, I actually yeah. want to say that I feel like if Bruce Wayne in that occasion was, he was offered a choice where he could walk away, he would yeah. have walked away. He yes. wouldn't have done yes. it. He wouldn't yes, have caused yes, the yes. fire, you know. Yeah. Because yeah, Ras yeah. Al like uh, Liam Neeson's character, like tells him that there's no going back now. Yeah. That's yes, why he was yes, forced yes, yes, to yes, do yes, something yes, exactly. like that. Yeah. It, like that's it all about na? like it's all come to the choices people make and that's what differentiates him and that is the yeah. end of first act when he like he knows what to do. And he yeah. uh, went on the plane with uh, Alfred and he first talked um, about the uh, symbol which is uncorrupted. So that is yeah. where the first as a act sim. ended. Yeah. And as a man, this, I can be destroyed. But as a symbol. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, then I was like, oh. Dude, the dialogues oh, are yes. so good. It's coming. <laughs> the the dark night like... is coming. Yeah, the dark night is coming. <laughs> And the f- it's not like second act uh, even like drowns even for a second. The, like now I want to connect it to the f- starting of first act. Okay. In the first act, we were shown a boy fell down. He couldn't get up yeah. until he g- gets some help from some outside. Why do we okay. fall? <laughs> yeah. Why do we second fall? Second act, <laughs> ha, he, he knowingly went into the hole. Okay. And yeah. when the bats came, he fell down. But he rose yeah. up. That shows yeah. that he has overcome his fear and now it's time to face it. 
okay and true, that true. is such a important thing to make because like yeah yeah and and these little little things really makes batman being yeah, and uh, dude 15, that scene was yeah. epic man where he just yeah. and it comes back in dark knight rises as well like yeah. it towards the end like you know it's so such a good scene that when he yeah. goes with the like the light thing or whatever he's holding in his hand and you know yeah. all the bats sort of swarm around him it's so yeah. good uh yeah. like i just want to add one thing to that uh, the building fire thing when mm-hmm. the fire started okay mm-hmm. he the ninjas easily could have just left the yes easily like when yes, the fire yes. was small like he yeah. there was no compulsion to stay even yeah. rasal <laughs> even like uh, the fake rasal do he even tells them stop this mm-hmm. guy is mine i'm fighting yes. him so the ninjas yes. should have been just been like okay i guess we can go out of here yeah <laughs> <He's out. laughs> yeah I mean, there didn't. There was no reason for them to stay there. But I also yeah. feel like, uh, uh, just from a filmmaking point of view, I think the fact that you see a lot of ninjas, the bodies of ninjas, sort of getting flung around during the fire, yeah. that yeah. was just a choice to make it entertaining and flashy. Like mm-hmm. I think that was just the intention. But I like. I feel like if you look at the core of it, he didn't actually mm. try to kill those people. Yes. Like it was and, more of an accidental death. I think for yes. all those ninjas. And even if they were dead, who knows if. Like if they are dead or not? They True, are... I don't think most of them are dead because even in the end when they come, they are pretty much hmm. in full force. The ninja. Yes, exactly. I mean, yeah. Rashal Gu was also blown, na, but he got saved by Bruce Wayne. So maybe someone yeah. who would have, like that's the thing. Huh. The passion so, is something uh, your enemies will not share. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, man. <laughs> Obviously, it's a, end of the day, it's a super superhero movie, na. You will. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, I I love Liam Neeson's dialogues in this man. People are drunk to the ground. You know, like oh, the way oh, he says yeah. those yeah. dialogues is so good. The the way okay, so of that yeah. dialogue when that was Dude, like two. He is he was the he was one of the best antagonists they could like ask. Uh, like uh, now we are going to uh, so we established we have gone to hmm. I think let's get to uh, bad let's get to the the funny the charismatic side of Bruce Wayne now. Yeah. And we'll talk about the humor scenes as well. That yeah. was it's fantastic how Christian Bale sort of switches on his like you know fake mm. Bruce Wayne persona and his conversations with Alfred on like how he should like go about this you know how he should <laughs> go about his public life. It's amazing and even the scenes that he has with Lucius Fox where yeah. you know he's like I mean, getting the new sort of pure gold. Time. That is pure gold, man. <laughs> Dude, this series has such an amazing cast. Like yeah. every, all the actors are good. Like all the actors are worthwhile, you know. Hmm. <laughs> But uh, I just like uh, those scenes where you know he buys the hotel, and <laughs> okay. uh, dude, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, I mean, he's just like you know I I'm buying this hotel and I'm breaking some new <laughs> rules. <laughs> um, and there's also this uh, one scene where you know like. Uh, uh, the like Earl, the ca- the Earl, the character that uh, yeah, he yeah. goes up against in the Wayne Foundation, in the Wayne board. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he asks him yeah. like, you know, what do you think Ooh. about Batman? What do you think about this guy? And he's like, clearly a guy who dresses as a bat has his shoes. Has his like shoes, the way yeah. he's just, <laughs> it's it's very good, man. The, I love the whole sort of uh, the mm. sort of like the Hollywoodish actor persona <laughs> of Bruce Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> It was so old and it was so old. Like, <laughs> like it's uh, one thing which you don't expect to see old movies to cover, but they did such a good job of covering this side of the character as well. Yes, yes, yes. Do you have anything uh, to add like, to that? Uh, huh. Now there is one problem with I have one of the only one character, and that is my only mm-hmm. character which I have problems with, is the usage of Scarface. A okay. scarecrow. Ah, uh, sorry, ha, huh, scarecrow. And yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, I have some points of that, but you go on, you go on first. I, yeah, I'll explain like, my points. Yeah, <laughs> uh, like after Falcone introduced in the uh, the power and the power of fear, Scarface yeah. introduced that uh, he yeah, respects cool. mind's power over the body. Psychologically, yeah, yeah. he should affect people. Okay, but uh, I like it was not Scarface was not utilized too much, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, uh, like, I mean, see, if you look at Scarecrow, right, as a character, if yeah. you look at the entire script, he is the one mm-hmm. character that should not make any sense because yes. he's not established in the start. Like Falcone mm-hmm. is established in the start. Rasalgo, yes. like I think the three main villains are Rasalgo, Falcone, and Scarecrow. 
So yeah, Sca- yeah, uh, yeah. Falcone and Ra's al Ghul are established in the start as well. Like yes, they established, yes. they established pre-Batman, I guess you can mm. say. Like even mm. post-Batman mm. and pre-Batman, these are the yeah. two characters. Say, <laughs> and I think Scarecrow's character is one character that should have not made any sense. But yeah. the reason why it actually works for most part of the movie is because of Killian Murphy's performance. Yeah, like man, his performance that, is that so whole... good. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, you're like that... you know you don't even care that this character is not given much of uh, much to do actually. Yeah. But I yeah. think why his character works is because of the theme of the movie that is fear, and yeah. Scarecrow is one character that sort of personifies fear. Yes. And I think yeah. that's why it works to a certain extent. Yeah. But I I guess the one thing which I don't like about this uh, Scarecrow character is towards the end when he's just like riding his horse in Gotham yeah, City. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. And it, uh, it, see. <laughs> yeah. The only reason I could come up with was that if you see his first scene was also with Rachel, like yeah. uh, in the courtroom scene, and his yeah. last scene is also with Rachel in this movie at least. Yeah, and yeah. I think they were just trying to sort of establish his uh, sort of characters and antagonists to Rachel as well. So they were yeah. trying to like uh, you know they they kind of divide the antagonists I guess you could say in a way. So they I... have Batman have his moment before in like in that scene where you know he sprays yeah. the scare the gas back at him. Like uh, yeah. because uh, as uh, sort of like as tit for tat as to what he did to him, and yeah. uh, which I, I just have to say this like I know I'm, I I go all over the place sometimes but you know that <laughs> scene where uh, Batman sort of sprays the gas back at Scarecrow and then he sees yeah. Batman in, in that way oh, in yes, that yeah. uh, scary way that cowl was actually practical that was no that uh, that cowl was actually ninety percent practical there was just very little CGI used on that. Oh, okay. Yeah, the the call which covers his mouth and stuff, just yeah. a little bit of CGI which was used. They were actually made a practical call just for that one scene. Oh, it that was a BTS scene yeah. which I saw. I was like, my God! Like, I'm not trying to criticize Marvel here, but for yeah. Endgame, they literally had to CGI all of their white suits. Like because yeah. they didn't like have the preparation beforehand, and then I see movies like Batman Begins where they make a practical suit just for one scene. I'm like impressed so yeah. much. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> But that's Christopher Nolan for you, right? Dude, He goes hey, it's not just mind. it's not just Christopher Nolan. I think it's just an old style of filmmaking. You know that was so pure. Yeah. 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 So I mean, uh, the for me that's that's for my that's my assessment of Scarecrow as a character. I feel like his main sort of Function in the script is his personification of fear, and yeah. like, just as, I think that sort of opposing force for Rachel as well. And uh, to be honest, his sort of arc where you know, like, he comes uh, riding a horse towards the end is probably my <laughs> least favorite part of the movie. Yes, man. I mean, I mean, just imagine, man. Okay, how would have that scene build up in that actual movie? Okay, so yeah. because he clearly came for Rachel and Rachel only. so he must yeah. be riding in a horse over the town over that place and he must be st- yeah. searching for rachel where is rachel in all the yeah. smoke surrounding <laughs> i mean how true, like true, funny true. man just it was <laughs> this the, i mean those are, like i uh, the only issues i have this movie are mostly with third act like i would have yes, been happy yes. if you know if scarecrow mm. was done like you know batman yeah. sprays the gas at him and then he's yeah. done you know we didn't have to yeah, see yeah, him yeah. again yes yes in yes, this yes, movie yes. like I love the fact that he comes back in the Dark Knight and in the Dark Knight Rises for like cameos, and yeah. I think that's great. But for Batman yeah. Begins, I think that should have been the end. You know, the last scene with Scarecrow should have been that scene where Gordon sort of interrogates him, and he's yeah. like, you know, you're too late. You know, you can't yes. do it. He's already here. You know, that should yes. have been the last scene. They didn't need yeah, more, yeah. actually. Yeah. Even though like Killian Murphy, that actor, he does an amazing job as Scarecrow. Like, yeah, true man. Dude, they couldn't have was... not. Yeah, dude, this <laughs> that character should have not made any sense. If you look at yes, it from a script point of view, yes, like, exactly, know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But he made that character's own, and he does such a good job. Yeah. So uh, and, we covered Scarecrow, I guess. Uh, do you have any yeah. more points to add, Scarecrow? Yeah. Scarecrow? Now we are as approaching we are the end of the second act. Now here here is this one thing. See, Bruce is now introduced to the concept of power, fear. Okay. He has accepted his alter ego. He knows what to do yeah, to create yeah. a symbol, Batman. He has already created Batman, but he yeah. still hasn't conquered his fear. Okay, he's like facing it, but he's not at the top of it. There is this yeah. one final piece missing, which is given to him by Rashalgu himself in the end of the second act, when he intervenes in that building, 
and when he yeah. tells Bruce that he killed his parents, now this yeah. is the a uh, starting of redemption arc. Okay, up until now Bruce was this uh, thinking that if he hadn't been afraid of bat, he wouldn't have asked his parents to leave the theater, and they he wouldn't have uh, they wouldn't have end up. Uh, getting killed okay but now when rashal go told that he killed him bruce knew no, that but I even if I he i don't think he says he kills them no he just says it he, like before he had tried attacking gotham but uh, the parents of his uh, like bro yeah. like thomas win and martha win sort of like stood as opposition but i don't think it's clearly stated that he killed them no 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 he said no because like they had to get rid uh, rid of uh, wayne because they were the only standing pillars Uh, in true, their true. dream but of uh, look yeah. I, so, as far as i remember i don't he explicitly states that that he was the reason behind their killing maybe it's the implication i don't know like, i think uh, I he sort of just says that you know we underestimated certain uh, citizens of the family and the, then he says that yeah. uh, you know like uh, we we tried economics but we uh, underestimated yeah. certain citizens of the, the city like you know thomas and martha yeah. but then he goes on to say that you know they were killed by their own very own citizens and then then i mm-hmm. think he says that, you know but this time no one will stop us like he yeah. said that like you you have the courage to stand like your parents like i know yeah. most of the dialogues so, like it just comes <laughs> out <laughs> the could you yeah, like it really shows no how much you love and literally go yeah. into the movie yeah but i i i get your point that uh, hmm. i guess you know for me that scene was more of that you know he can, i feel like uh, He he actually almost quits there. Uh, Bruce Wayne yeah. as a cat, like he even says hmm. that what have I done, like to Alfred. Yeah. And dude, that scene where Alfred is like, why did we fall, sir? Like, and yeah. that brings everything back to full circle to the start. Yes. And even when yeah. Alfred said, you know, like uh, Bruce Wayne says, like you've never given up, uh, given up on me, ne- right? Never. And Alfred never. was like, never. And the never. way he says never. that, right? it's so good. <laughs> and you know, there's this one little humor when when the pillar uh, like, fell in, uh, fell on. Oh, him. dude, that scene uh, is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> What is the use of all that push-ups if you can't just push yeah. one killer away? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I just want to say I know we talk about the humor in the start also. There's one yeah. big scene that we forgot to talk oh, about. Oh, I know, I know. We took in Rachel out, movie. right? Yeah, and the first of all, the bat CGI, amazing, and the way yeah. how they built up that, like you have all the SWAT teams come and surround Batman, and you're like as an audience, you're sitting here and you're thinking. How is he going to get out of this? And Bats is just such a cool way of, you know, like getting out of that situation. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, now, like uh, at the end of, ha, huh, there's this one more thing when, where people say that uh, when Rachel go uh, tell him that uh, you burn my house, I will burn yours. You left me to die, I will left you to die. And then people say yeah. you moron, bad uh, Bruce saved you and all that. Now here is my no, favorite no, that... movie. that no but that doesn't apply to ras he even says you know uh, compassionate even like you know he yeah. he said that you know yeah. you left me that this is one this is the mistake yeah. that you that you did you know you shared a certain sense of compassion with me yeah. and i'm not going to share that no, with no. you but uh, like somewhere saying like uh, it should have been justified or something like that he even saved him no uh, like as like i don't know if that is the context or even if i'm stretching it i could be overstretching it but uh, here's the thing see uh when bruce saved uh rashal go he didn't knew that he was rashal go okay and true, true. he uh, like he thought the old old monk was the rashal go and he left yeah. him the old monk uh, rashal go to die in that f- fire in that burning school okay so but yeah. when then the actual rashal go came to know about it that he was killing rashal go so it makes sense na why would you save yeah. someone when you are he tried to kill you in the past hmm true yeah the, true, true. the, the true. Uh, my uh, sort of uh, assessment is a little different like uh, hmm. i agree with your point but i feel like batman still would have saved uh, Ra's Al Ghul. Like uh, in the end, in the train, that was just a thing. But you know, he Ra's Al Ghul had pushed it so much to the point mm-hmm. where Batman was like, you know, I can't save you anymore. Like even yeah. if I put like the, like this is all your mistake. You brought yeah. this machine in this train. Yeah. You did this. Uh, you did all of this, and I had to do everything to stop this. So mm-hmm. for me, like uh, the him, like it's same. It's similar to that fire in the building. Like this is something yeah. that Batman had to do. Like he didn't directly kill Ra's Al Ghul. indirectly yeah. he did cause the railroad to go down 
but he directly yeah. didn't kill Ra's al Ghul. That's sort of my sort of thinking of this. Like, yeah. uh, I don't know. Like, it, it is a bit of a gray area, to be honest. Like, this is the yeah, one it, sort of uh, really, area where yeah, this film yeah, gets yeah. criticism for. And yeah. uh, I think it does get rightly criticism for. Because if you look at Dark Knight, and even mm. The Dark Knight Rises, uh, mm. the ideology of Batman is a bit more clear. Like, see, even in The Dark Knight, he pushes Harvey Dent down. Yeah. Like uh, in the end, so you know he lets Harvey Dent go. Like he pushes him off the building. So I, yeah. I like to think of uh, Christopher Nolan Batman as one Batman where he will do everything he can not to kill. Like he will yeah. stretch the yes. maximum yes. possibility of not killing. But when yeah. it comes to like the extreme extreme moment, he sometimes yeah. would have to let people die. Yes, that's sort I mean, of my assessment that, of it. Yeah, that's that's the like. Uh... That conversation can go on and on for hours and days. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. like it's no end. To like it's not winning of any side. It's just you yeah. think of this way and I think of that way. It's just that thing. Yeah, true, true, true. I just yeah. uh, like I know I, I keep like there are all I keep thinking, remembering scenes, but I just want to just say one scene. And just I like, thought about it while watching the movie as well. Uh, that's the car chase scene. Okay, now this movie was shot in two thousand five. And the yeah. car chase scene is amazing. Okay, and look, <laughs> I just want to compare it to the BVS car chase scene. Okay, so now yeah. the BVS car chase scene is uh, probably is a car chase scene that has a lot more CGI to it. Uh, the technology yeah. has evolved a lot more, and it has hmm. a lot of cool like slow motion shots and stuff like that. But hmm. the Batman Begins chase scene is still better. And for me, uh, the re- at least just it's a, this is a personal preference. Okay, you can like the BVS yeah. one more. That's completely fine. No, no. Uh, to the I agree with you. Well. I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, but. But for me, why I like the Batman Begins chasing is like it's that it's not just the car like doing tricks and stuff. It also mm. shows the police. It shows the reaction of the police, <laughs> like how yeah. stunned they are to see like this black sort of tank roaming around their streets. And you know, yeah. And that also stakes to it because Rachel is like deteriorating. Her health is deteriorating. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's like the perfect cinematic moment to give you entertainment. True. True. That's what Christopher Nolan did with the car chase scene. And uh, I just want to give you a bit of trivia. Jay, are you ready mm. for this trivia? Mm, yes. You might know this. I don't know for sure. But uh, so, uh, you know, when Batman gets stuck on top of the parking area and the yeah. police all like surround him and then a police officer gets out of the car and he's like, Batman, turn off your engines. Do you uh-huh. remember that scene? Yeah. Uh, it's it's just before he sort of activates his weapon system thing. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, so there uh, so there's a police officer there who like tells him, you know, turn off your engines and stuff like that, and then yeah. Batman escapes from that place, like he jumps on rooftops and stuff like that, and then he, after the after a few minutes, there's an other police officer who says that at least tell me what it looks. Tell like. me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh shit, oh shit, oh, I know where it is going. Oh my god, ah, uh, who is that person? No, no, I just want to say that it's the same exact actor. So what happened is that yeah. Christian Nolan reused the same uh, same extra for two different yeah. scenes, and it's supposed to be two different actors, uh, two different characters yeah. actually. Because yeah. there's no way that see, first of all, he already knows what the car looks like, so there's no yeah. way that's the same uh, character. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I I had the same question, you know, just a couple of scenes uh, before he he saw that thing, and now he's asking yeah. again. <laughs> No, I and uh, like there are there. Are, like, I personally love that actor a lot because his delivery is awesome. The way he says, "At least tell yeah. me what it looks like," and the car just <laughs> and he's like, "Never mind." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like, there's a theory uh, in like some chats that you know he is like the twin brother. So these are like twin brothers in the Gotham Police Force. <laughs> oh, and I'm totally yeah. down for that theory. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I mean, uh, for me, I love this car chase scene so much because I I love the city's reaction to Batman. Uh, yeah. it, they do the same thing in Dark Knight Rises as well when you know he brings the bad jet to like uh, Gotham City and all the police officers are like you know in awe hmm. <laughs> and you know seeing the bad jet sort of fly. So I yeah. mean that's one thing that you know Nolan gets very right and. Again, mm. I don't want to like put down Man of Steel so much, but this is where I feel like <laughs> Man of Steel could have also done this. Like people would yeah. have been so ecstatic to see, you know, Superman fly for the first time, you know. True, but there true. was no reaction from the people. They were just like, uh, like they didn't give any opportunities for the people to react because mm. they just put that alien invasion right to the heart of the movie. And I think that's yeah. the biggest mistake that Man of Steel did. I'm not trying to put down Man of Steel. I like Man of Steel a lot. You but already just did Batman Man of Steel. <laughs> what? No, just to see. Ba- yeah, yeah. I sort of like feel like ah, 
it, I think yeah. we covered a lot of uh, Batman Begins. I just want to cover one more line of Batman Begins. Yeah. Uh, it's this line yeah. which uh, Rachel tells him, like, it's not who you are, it's what you do that defines. Yeah, what defines, yeah. That's such a good line. It's yeah, such a good yeah, line. This that, movie that... is filled with such good dialogues. <laughs> so, so, so true. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Jay, and, do you uh, have any other thoughts yeah. on this movie or do you want to call it a wrap? Yeah, last last thing I want to say, the uh, the idea of Rashal Gu blowing the Gotham Tower for that mm. machine to work is not only literally done rightly but figurative, uh, like symbolically too. See, in one in second act, uh, yeah. Al- Alfred t- uh, tells him that uh, Alfred or uh, like Fox, I think some either of them tells him that. Wayne Tower is the unofficial center of Gotham. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And Lucius Fox his, tells him, right? Yeah, Lucius Fox tells him, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I, I like that scene where Lucius Fox has such a has such a big <laughs> like hatred towards Earl. And he's like, you know, yeah. he, he kind of made, you know, Wayne Tower, the unofficial tower, like unofficial center yeah, of Gotham City. Yeah, yeah. And of course Earl had to let it all go. Like <laughs> I love how much he's bitching about Earl. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, look, yeah. Morgan Freeman was such a good choice for yeah, this movie, seriously. and all of his like, interactions with Bruce Wayne, like with Kristen yeah. Bale, is so good. Anyway, go on, go on, go on with your like yeah, point of yeah. paint out. Huh. So the last thing is like, so the way the decision of Rasha Gu blowing up the Gotham Tower because. It, uh, in the very first uh, scene, we were shown uh, Bruce asking his father like go- about Gotham Tower and the metro and all that. So he was like, Gotham for Gotham it was a symbol of the belief that rich and poor can go along with each other. So, so uh, and this was like uh, it was the one important thing which gives the underprivileged people hope and rich people a chance to make a difference. So by blowing it up, he would have like. See, the metro tower is the only thing that uh, kind of holds together the rich and the poor by the efforts of uh, Thomas Wayne. Okay, and he clearly said it in the first scene. Like, I, uh, we did that to help people. So, if yeah, yeah. he would have blown it, he would have caused the whole city into mayhem because yeah. of that. So, th- 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 this this very small thing. Symbolically, was done rightly too. Yeah. I just want to add, I just want to, add <laughs> yeah. to your point actually yeah, that yeah, uh, yeah. the thing we are saying the relation between rich and poor I feel like that is brought in like throughout the series you see that theme sort of coming up again and again and especially in Dark Knight yes. Rises like yes. in Dark Knight also you have that scene of the fairy where you know you have the prisoners and one fairy and you have the rich people yes, and the other yes, fairy yes. and, yes. Oh, God, and that even in Dark Knight seen, yes. Rises even in yeah. Dark Knight Rises, the central conflict that sort of Bane sort of initiates between the rich and the poor, where the poor yes. sort of takes control over the, mm. you know, the rich. And, you know, I, I love the fact that the movie kept bringing these themes, but they found fresh ways to include it. It was not, it didn't, mm. it never felt like repetition of these themes. Yes, yes. It always felt like they had a new way of doing these themes. And, you know, that was a very good point that you brought up. Yeah, and uh, la- just last thing I want to wrap it up. We talked about this before the starting of podcast. Now I want to be the one who says it. <laughs> See, Nolan is such a visionary director, and he sees the future. Okay, and he clearly, <laughs> he clearly saw. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, the police brutality was clearly shown during those days, <laughs> and the I want to give this flask. man credit for being a true visionary man. So I mean, at- I mean, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was very like the way they showed it. It felt very similar to what is happening right now. Like yes, the way exactly, how yeah. uh, you have an African American person that scream like you know I see police yeah. brutality and you literally have past this point and he's like you know do you want to see some violence gun violence like yeah, the way yeah. he's just, you're like oh my god. <laughs> it's, it's a, it, it's yeah, a yeah. terrible thought, but still, you know, when you see it in the movie, you're like, oh my god, it's 15 years, like, this was done 15 years back, but we still have the same issues. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, the last thing I want to say is that King Joffrey was there too in the movie. Yeah, 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 I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Even though his yeah. uh, his entire thing with uh, the the Rachel character, I thought that was like yeah. one of the weaker aspects of the movie. 
Uh, yeah. Like I don't know. Like it was okay. Yeah. It was okay. It was fine. Yeah. <laughs> I th- I think what would have more. I don't know. Like if it's true or not, because I have to watch the rises again. It would have been so cool if that child uh, grew up to be a Robin, which uh, it was used in uh, Dark Knight Rises. But uh, John Blake's yeah. character. I'm not yeah. sure. Like uh, his yeah, hair. Yeah. It's, it's not. It's not. Right? It's not. It's not. Yeah. It's not. That. W- but I that mean, would have been. So- yeah. They could explain that away. Like they could have. He changed his hair. Like that's not yeah. a very unrealistic thing, honestly. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. uh, because he has, great, yeah. yeah. Because and if you look at Dark Knight, like, like John Blake character, he has a sort of big connection to Batman's character. Like he yes. even tells to Bruce Wayne that you know you used to come hmm. and visit us in chat, like you used to come and visit us in our orphanage, but I yeah. and you could you should like you know bring this very pretty girl with you, but I could see right through you, you know who you are. Yeah, really yeah. And yeah. I don't know, like I, I think it's a. It's it's probably it's never probably going to be confirmed and it's probably not hmm. the case but it's a nice fun theory to just you know think about I guess yeah it the... would be great you know for, like it would have make sense for that character as well like why it was there because it could have yeah, been yeah. any other child right true 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 like I like but... that one scene where you know he's uh, he sees Batman in the like climbing the building <laughs> and he's like you know yeah. my friends are not going to believe that you know they saw like he's. <laughs> Like I saw you, and Batman just gives him a gadget thing. It's a, it's a nice scene. Yeah. Like uh, that scene is really nice. It's a it sort of like brings Batman to the kids as well. Like yeah. you know, in spite of the <laughs> mature tone of the movie, you know, there's a there's a lot of things to the kids kids as well. And I just yeah. want to talk about the character Flash, like really quick. Amazing mm. character, absolutely love it. <laughs> mm. The character Flash, uh, the the sort of partner of, of Gordon in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the way, you know, that scene in the rain, right, where he lifts, Batman lifts him up, oh, and he's God, like, you know, oh, swear yeah. to me. And I was like, dude, <laughs> Batman looks so good with the rain coming down. Oh my God. <laughs> like, do I look like a cop? <laughs> <laughs> there is one iconic dialogue in there too, no? Uh, what? Sw- I, swear, uh, I swear to God, swear to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so good. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, like overall, <laughs> we love this movie, and uh, like yeah. even me and Jay sort of talk a little bit. There are some points in third act where the action is not uh, the best. Like uh, even yeah. if you look at the Batman Story suit, it's a pretty, yeah. it's a pretty stiff suit. Like yeah. if you look at even the older movies, this suit was actually a bit more flexible than the previous iterations of the suits of Batman. But yeah. it, even then, it was a very uncomfortable suit for Christian Bale to wear, and. It didn't. Yeah. It was not the most uh, flexible suit, so you can mm. see that they have cut around the action a lot, and you know, like many of those moves are, don't make a lot of sense. Even in the last fight against Ross Al Ghul, I think yeah. it's a serviceable fight. It's nothing great, mm. but yeah. you know, I think yeah. there are a few points in third act which don't entirely make a whole lot of sense, but it's still I, a really I, enjoyable, great movie. For yes, ex- ex- I think the final act was left for like. For those comic book lovers and for those who wanted to see true, an true. action extravaganza, you know, true. like for the first two acts, he done his part as a writer, man. He was like, yeah. he was given so many things. Final act was just like, okay, blow things up and like, no, cool I think uh, the one thing I liked about the third act is they still put a bit of humor, like when Gordon is like driving the bat, the bat. Oh, movie. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Like, uh, and I uh, see <laughs> one thing that Christian Roll does so well is that he raised the stakes. Like he yeah. had the entire city in you know in smoke, and there was yeah. no backup. Police were all inca- mm. incapacitated in that island, and then you're like, and uh, you literally have Commissioner Loeb saying like, you know, like someone yes. come in, someone come in, and then you have Batman sort of like, you know, like you know putting yeah. on his belt and sort of you're like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> And like yeah. uh, even he did the same thing with the SWAT scene when the when the bats come in, he raised mm. the stakes up. You know, and I think that's why, even in spite of some of the flaws in third act, it still works because yeah, the, everything is coherent and everything. You're still rooting for the hero, in spite yes. of even the small flaws here and there. Yeah, and uh, we have to talk about the Joker, sort of like uh, the teaser in the end. Oh, oh. Uh, we will conclude with that scene. But dude, <laughs> I love the fact that they found an in-universe explanation for the Joker in Batman yeah. Begins as well. Like the way how Gordon tells Batman that you know. Uh, like you sort of inspired this thing to come up because you know, hmm. like you know, we use uh, uh, like armor piercing bullets and they get more armor, you know. And then yeah. you, you know, you use theatrics and stuff like that. And then you know, he presents the Joker card. I I didn't see this in the theater. And I I saw this when I was just seven, so I probably hmm. didn't get it that time when I saw the scene. 
But yeah. I'm just looking at the scene now, and I'm like, being like, you know, if I was like 13 or 14 when I watched this, I probably would have blown out of my mind when I saw the Joker dance. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, do you yeah. have any like uh, final thoughts, Jay? No, man. Like this movie is like excellent at writing the character. Every character they introduce, the editing is too good. They have only yeah. kept whatever is necessary and uh, avoid all the fillers they could have. And uh, just uh, this little detail, like for a filmmaker, when you're introducing a character, it's very essential to not just like put the character here. See, yeah. if you could explain the character's trait with one scene, it would be very great. And he did that with the flaw scene. The very first scene when Floss and Gordon were introduced, actually Gordon was yeah. second time introduced. In that we were like we know that Fla- Floss was the corrupt one and Gordon was the honest one. In that one yeah, scene yeah. only. True, true, true. So they don't have to uh, spend more time on the character development of that. We true. pretty much knew that Floss was the corrupt one and Gordon was the honest one. That's true. why Bruce g- goes uh, to him, Gordon. And that's such a clever film. And uh, when you said editing, you know, there's one like a uh, technical point. Like they sort of like I I said that they, the suit was stiff, so they had to cut around some of the action scenes. Like they yeah. couldn't show Batman be very flexible. But even in scenes where you know Batman comes down and wraps uh, wraps over someone else to take him up, like you have yeah. that happen a couple of times. He does this to Gordon. He does this <laughs> to uh, Rachel and the kid as well. Actually, yeah. that would have been very cheesy. Like just think about it, like Batman coming, wrapping himself over someone, but the way it's edited and shown, you don't feel it's yeah. easy, and they don't show it actually that detailedly. They just show it yeah. coming down quickly, wrapping it, just going up. That's it. Like they yeah. don't show it in full detail, which is a pretty, like a pretty like cool move actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So with uh, with the wrapping. They're coming mm-hmm. to the wrap of this podcast as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us for this podcast. Uh, this is an amazing sort of discussion. I think we really covered, I think, every aspect of this movie. Yeah, like, I can't I, think I, of anything we missed. Thing, no, nothing, we covered nothing, everything. And, uh, everything. like, we are in total awe of this movie. Like, uh, if, you're, yeah. if you're not a Batman fan, and if you're probably watching this movie now, some of the mm. things will be a little dated. There'll be some, because of how much superhero movies we are exposed to nowadays. But, yeah. uh, truly, this was a start for everything. I consider True. this as a start to be... Yeah. This is a movie that sort of revolutionized superhero movies going forward. Like, yeah. if you look at most of the movies that came out after this, like Iron Man, Captain America, uh, Captain America, like, if you, like, see the production of those movies, you can always see Batman Begins as the inspiration behind the movie. Like, and it's not yeah. just superhero movies, even, like, movies like Terminator Salvation, like, you, you, you see what the directors say about the movie, and they're like, you know... Batman Begins was our inspiration, you know, behind True. the retelling of this franchise. And I think, uh, like, it it wasn't all positive, like, the after effects of this, like, because pro- everyone, like, not everyone is Christopher Nolan, but this movie <laughs> definitely had a defining sort of moment in the film industry as yeah. a whole. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, so before we wrap this up, I, I just have to wish one of my friends a happy birthday, if that's okay with PJ. Are man, it's our channel. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you also have to say it with me. Oh, yeah, Are sure. sure. <laughs> so, uh, actually, it's not. Uh, the podcast should be up within a few hours, but it's actually for a birthday tomorrow. But we'll wish it today. So, uh, happy birthday, Sai Krishna. <laughs> happy birthday, Sai Krishna. Do you know Sai Krishna Jay? Are, wait, wait, Sai, Re, Re, Ravindra's? Uh, yeah, Ravindra's, yeah, Ravindra's friend. Yeah. Uh, are, Sai, happy birthday, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so his birthday is tomorrow, so, you know, we're very excited to celebrate. Obviously, it's lockdown, yeah. so we can't come over and beat you up, which is yeah. very sad, <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, uh, like, you know, I, it's, it's sad, lockdown, you know, we can't celebrate mm. birthdays like we used to, but. Mm-hmm. You've always been a very good friend to me, and we we actually were in two semesters in the same class. So me and Sai have a pretty oh. good bond, and we both are South Indians uh, yeah. in a college which is predominantly North Indian esque, I guess. <laughs> 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 so it's a lot of fun. So you know, uh, Sai, yeah. have a great year ahead, and yeah. you know, do well in life. He will. He will. 
Yeah, I'm advising you, so I do well in life. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! And keep uh, giving your presentations, and you know. And I just want to say, like, actually, actually, that's what Sai always says. Sai always uses that line, uh, that word. Okay. Yeah, actually. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this one reference only Sai will get. So I'll I'll just say one story about Sai. Yeah. Before we wrap this up, so uh, Sai, uh, we had operations management class during our first semester, and uh, there was uh, there was a topic where you know our sir he asked us to speak about uh, 3D printing, and <laughs> Sai took full like initiative and he just stood up and he started talking about 3D. He was like, actually, is it 3D printing? And he just started rambling about 3D printing being an engineer. And the operations sir didn't really agree with him in spite of his best efforts. So that's my oh. Sai Krishna story to you. Next one I should have chosen a better story, man. Okay, uh, okay, I think I have a better story. So uh, <laughs> during uh, I okay, th- this is actually a pretty good story actually. So during Drishti, yeah. uh, Sai Krishna was part of a dance performance. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. So he was part of the Indo Western dance performance that was done, and uh, and if we if you, uh, so obviously the listeners of the show, like I don't think there won't be any listeners, but still I'll just say this: uh, Sai Krishna is a nunchucks champion. Like he knows yeah, how to do nunchucks. I've... Yeah, yeah, you know I've that. I've seen him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what happened is that uh, the performers actually needed to have nunchucks. Okay, like there was a part of the dance where he was going to do use his nunchucks, and you know he was going to like sta- he was going to jump over many people, and he was going to use his nunchucks. What Ooh. happened was the props, the background props that we had, were mm. so big that as the performance unfolded, mm. without Cyclist, Cyclist has sort of kept the nunchucks in the stage, like in the back of the stage. But the yeah. background prop is so big that the nunchucks got stuck under it. So oh. <laughs> when the time actually came for Sai Krishna to actually do the nunchucks, <laughs> he could not find it because it was all <laughs> under the background props. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he had to improvise. And, and what Sai did was that he just jumped on the people and he just like sort of did the hand action that mimicked nunchucks. To sort of get over the moment, <laughs> and no one noticed it, <laughs> including the people on stage. <laughs> they were just like, "Oh yeah, I guess he's doing it." <laughs> so uh, that is my. Yeah, that's a better. Yeah, that that's is a, a better story. story. Right? That's a better story. <laughs> so that's my Sai Krishna story for you. I can't think of anything else. I know we have had many other crazy stories, but I can't think of anything else right now. But uh, this yeah. this is the three things you should know about Sai uh, Sai Krishna. He's a big fan of 3D printing. He does nunchucks, and he, you know, he uses the word actually a lot. <laughs> and with that, actually, we're coming to the end of the podcast. Thanks for listening yes. to everyone. Uh, I don't know how you bear with us for so long, but hey, this hoping... was pretty good, man. This was the best podcast we have ever done. Oh, Jay, Jay tells us every time. You know, every time we finish a podcast, he's like, "This was the best one, Manoj." <laughs> Because we are improving, you know, we are yeah, taking oh, one wow. step ahead. <laughs> I think this one was also a movie that we loved a lot. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, so uh, listen to the show. If you have any topics that you would like us to cover, do leave it in the comment section. Uh, we also have an audio version to this podcast. The links to everything will be in the description, I guess. Uh, let me see. Like, if I get time, I'll probably try to pull out a video version to this as well. uh if you you can find okay jay is still not ready to give us twitter handle but you can find me at the manoj matthew i'm there on instagram and twitter i'm not a very avid user i must say but if you leave me a dm or a tweet or something i, I would definitely read it you know like <laughs> you don't have to like if it's something bad then definitely do like you know i i need something better <laughs> in my life <laughs> <laughs> uh you get also uh if you guys Don't know this. Uh, you also do find Nona Prince's channel. We feature over there as well. If you want to hear us like mad talk about stuff, you can go over to Nona Prince's channel as well. And we come over there like I, I guess once a week from time to time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's a great guy, man. You should really yeah, yeah. check his channel if you're. His yeah. channel is amazing. He his channel has a lot more content than us. Uh, and uh, guys, stay tuned. Like because we did such a good discussion, I might, if I can, I might try pulling a video. Of any of these clips as well, you know who knows, because we yeah, talked a lot uh, good about that. Yeah. Let Let's see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
So, any final thoughts, Jay, before we wrap the podcast? I, I, you always put me on the spot on the last line. You know, I have always caught off guard. You know, I just want to say, man, be positive. <laughs> With all the negativity going around in our country, try to keep your sanity in line. True, Don't true, go true. by other people's words. Try to find out things on your own. Do some research on your own. You have the same... So, as I mean, guys, dude, uh, Twitter is going absolutely mad. And it's not just in I India. Mean, like, obviously, in yeah. India, we had an unfortunate uh, demise <laughs> of Sushant Singh Rajput and everything that happened. And you know what? When uh, that happened, I for a second thought that maybe we should do an episode on that. But there was so much mad things going on. Yeah. That I was like, you know, let's I just stay away. And this is... Yeah. This is just real everything that's happening. But uh, he was an absolute talented actor. And it's, it's really sad to see someone so talented go so young. But... After that, there's been sort of negativity, sort of uh, so many things are spreading. I have no clue what's happening. And But guys, just stay calm. Just stay positive. And this goes to everyone around the world as well. Like there's so many, there's so much uproar happening in the world right now. It's such a weird year. But just stay safe. Like focus on what you believe in and stay on the good side of things. That's sort of my sort of message to everyone here. So uh, I guess everyone sort of take care, stay safe. Be safe. Uh, look after your family. They're very important to you. And with that, we are concluding this podcast.